raining cats and dogs. Meaning, to describe very heavy rain, often used when it's raining heavily. Hey Mark, did you bring an umbrella today? No, I didn't think it would rain. Why? Well, look outside. It's raining cats and dogs. Oh no, I didn't expect this downpour. I'm gonna get soaked. I have an extra umbrella. You can borrow it so you don't get drenched. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. It's really pouring out there. Bite the bullet. Meaning, to face a difficult or unpleasant situation with courage. Hey, Tom, I have to talk to my boss about a mistake I made on the project. That's tough, Sarah. But sometimes, you have to bite the bullet and take responsibility. I know, but I'm nervous about it. I don't want to disappoint my boss. It's important to own up to your mistakes, Sarah. Biting the bullet now will show your professionalism. You're right, Tom. I'll schedule a meeting with my boss and bite the bullet. Butterflies in your stomach. Meaning, to feel nervous or anxious, especially before an important event or when facing something new or unfamiliar. Hey Tom, how did your presentation go today? It went okay, but I had butterflies in my stomach the whole time. I know the feeling. Public speaking can be nerve-wracking. Yeah, it's hard to shake those butterflies, even with practice. Well, you did a great job, despite the butterflies, Tom. Thanks, Emily. I hope the more I do it, the less I'll feel those butterflies. Nose to the grindstone. Meaning, to work hard and diligently, often with a strong focus on tasks and responsibilities. Hey, Sarah, I noticed you've been working really hard lately. Yeah, I have a big project deadline coming up, so I've had my nose to the grindstone. I can tell you're putting in a lot of effort. Keep it up. Thanks, Mike. Once this project is done, I can take a breather. You deserve it after keeping your nose to the grindstone for so long, Sarah. Cross that bridge when you come to it. Meaning, advising someone not to worry about future problems or challenges, but to deal with them when they arise. Emily, I'm worried about the final exam next week. What if I fail? Tom, there's no need to stress about it now. Let's study and cross that bridge when we come to it. You're right, Emily. I should focus on preparing instead of worrying. That's the spirit, Tom. We'll do our best, and if any challenges arise, we'll face them when the time comes. Thanks, Emily. Let's tackle this one step at a time. Back to the drawing board. Meaning, to start over or go back to the beginning of a plan or project, because the current approach isn't working. Hey, Sarah, our project proposal got rejected by the client. Oh no, that's disappointing. What should we do now? Well, it looks like we'll have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new plan. I see. Let's analyze the feedback and revise our proposal accordingly. That's a good approach, Sarah. Back to the drawing board it is, then. Up in arms. Meaning, to be very angry, upset, or agitated about a situation or issue. Hey Sarah, have you heard about the proposed changes to our work schedule? Yes, I did, and I'm up in arms about it. It's going to disrupt our work-life balance. I feel the same way. We should voice our concerns to management. Definitely, Mark. We need to make sure our opinions are heard. Let's gather our co-workers and have a meeting to discuss how to address this issue. That's a good plan, Mark. We can work together to make our concerns known. Two-faced. Meaning, describing someone who is insincere or acts differently with different people, often showing a different face to different individuals. I can't believe Lisa said one thing to my face and something completely different behind my back. Yeah, 
That's not cool at all. It's like she's two faced. I thought we were close friends, but now I'm not so sure. It's disappointing when someone turns out to be two faced and untrustworthy. I agree, Tom. I'll have to reevaluate our friendship. Donkey's ears. Meaning, referring to a very long time, often used to describe something that hasn't happened in a while. Hey, Sarah, I haven't seen you in a while. How have you been? I've been good, Mark. It feels like we haven't caught up in donkey's ears. I know, right? Life has been so busy lately. Let's make sure we don't let so many donkey's ears pass before our next meeting. Agreed, Sarah. Let's plan something soon and not wait that long again. Put all your eggs in one basket. Meaning, to invest all your resources, time, or effort into one thing or option, which can be risky if it doesn't work out. Hi, Sarah. I heard you're investing all your savings in that one stock. Yeah, I did. I believe it's going to perform really well. Be careful, Sarah. You shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. It's risky. I know, but I have a good feeling about this investment. Well, I hope it works out for you, but it's always safer to diversify your investments. Thanks for the advice, Mike. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Paint the town red. Meaning, to go out and have a great time, often involving a night of partying and celebration. Hey, Sarah, it's your birthday tomorrow. Any special plans? Thanks, Mark. I'm thinking of going out with friends to paint the town red. That sounds like a lot of fun. Any particular places in mind? Not yet, but I want to have a great time and celebrate with everyone. Well, I'm sure you'll paint the town red and make it a memorable birthday celebration. Thanks, Mark. I'm looking forward to it. Jump the gun. Meaning, to act prematurely or do something too soon, often before the appropriate time. Hey, Tom, did you hear that Lisa's buying a new car? Yeah, I did. She's so excited about it. I know, but I think she might be jumping the gun a bit. She hasn't even test driven it yet. You might be right, Emily. Sometimes it's better to do some research before making such a big decision. I hope she doesn't regret it. It's important not to jump the gun when it comes to significant purchases. Agreed, Emily. Hopefully, she'll take her time and make an informed choice. Catch someone red handed. Meaning, to catch someone in the act of doing something wrong or illegal. Hey, Sarah, did you hear about the missing cookies from the kitchen? Yeah, I heard. I suspect it was Mike, but I don't have any proof. Well, I just caught him red handed. I saw him taking cookies from the jar. Seriously? That's not cool. We should talk to him about it. Agreed, Sarah. We can't let him get away with it. Hold your horses. Meaning, to advise someone to be patient or wait before taking action. Sarah, I can't wait to start the road trip. Let's go now. Hold your horses, Tom. We need to make sure we have everything packed and ready. I know, but I'm just so excited to hit the road. It's great that you're excited, but rushing can lead to forgetting important things. You're right, Sarah. I'll calm down and help with the last minute preparations. That's the spirit, Tom. Once we're all set, we can enjoy our trip without worries. Cry wolf. Meaning, to raise a false alarm or give a false warning, making it difficult for others to trust future alerts. Hey. Have you heard about that new security system the neighbors installed? Yeah, I heard they had a false alarm last night. That's right. They've had so many false alarms lately that I think they're crying wolf. It's not good if people stop taking their alarms seriously because of false alarms. 
Exactly, Bob. It could be a problem if there's a real emergency. Let's hope they find a way to reduce those false alarms soon. Take a rain check. Meaning, to decline an offer or invitation for the moment, but express the intention to accept it later. Hey, Sarah, do you want to grab coffee with me after work today? I'd love to, Tom, but I'm swamped with a project right now. No worries, Sarah. How about we take a rain check and do it another day? That sounds like a great idea, Tom. I'll definitely take you up on that rain check. Perfect. We'll plan it for when you have more time. Behind closed doors. Meaning, privately or in secret, away from public view. Hey Mike, I heard there was a meeting with the higher-ups today. Yes, there was, but it was held behind closed doors, so I'm not sure what they discussed. It's always a bit mysterious when they have meetings like that. Indeed, they usually discuss important matters behind closed doors before making any announcements. Let's hope it's good news for the team. We'll find out soon enough. Agreed, Sarah. We'll have to wait and see what happens behind those closed doors. On top of the world. Meaning, to feel extremely happy or elated. Hey, Sarah, how was your day at the competition? It was amazing, Lisa. I won first place in the swimming event. Wow, that's fantastic. You must be on top of the world right now. I am, Lisa. It's such a great feeling to achieve my goal. I'm so happy for you, Sarah. Enjoy this moment of being on top of the world. Thanks, Lisa. I definitely will. Give it a shot. Meaning, to try something or give something a chance, often when you're uncertain about the outcome. Hey, Mike, have you ever tried rock climbing? No, I haven't, but it looks exciting. Have you? Yeah, I've done it a few times. It's a lot of fun. You should give it a shot. I've always been a bit nervous about it, but maybe I will try it sometime. That's the spirit, Mike. You never know until you give it a shot. You're right, Sarah. I'll give it a try and see how it goes. Awesome, Mike. I think you'll enjoy it. Play it cool. Meaning, to act calmly and composed, especially in a situation where one might feel nervous or anxious. Hey, Emily, I heard that our boss is coming to our team meeting today. Yeah, I heard that too. But remember, let's play it cool and act like it's a regular meeting. Right, we don't want to look nervous or unprepared. Exactly, Tom. If we play it cool, it'll show our confidence and professionalism. Good point, Emily. We've got this. Let's stay calm and focused. Keep your shirt on. Meaning, to advise someone to remain calm, patient, or not get upset about something. Mike, we've been waiting for the food at this restaurant for so long. I know, Sarah, it's taking longer than expected. I'm getting really hungry. This is frustrating. I understand, but let's keep our shirts on and be patient. It should arrive soon. You're right, Mike. I shouldn't get so worked up. Thanks for the reminder. No problem, Sarah. Keeping your shirt on in situations like this helps reduce stress. Shoot the breeze. Meaning, to engage in casual or idle conversation, often about unimportant or lighthearted topics. Hey, Mark, it's been a while since we hung out. What's new? Not much, Tom. Just the usual. How about you? Well, I got a new job, and I've been pretty busy with that. That's great news. We should get together sometime and shoot the breeze. I'd love to catch up and shoot the breeze with you, Mark. Let's plan it soon. Sounds like a plan, Tom. It'll be good to chat and relax. Take it with a grain of salt. 
meaning, to be skeptical about information or advice and not take it too seriously or literally. Sarah, I heard some gossip about our new co-worker. It doesn't sound good. Well, Tom, gossip can be exaggerated. You should take it with a grain of salt. You're right, Sarah. I don't want to jump to conclusions without knowing the facts. Smart thinking. It's always best to be cautious and not believe everything you hear. Thanks, Sarah. I'll remember to take things with a grain of salt in the future. Good choice, Tom. It'll help you avoid unnecessary misunderstandings. Stick to your guns. Meaning, to firmly hold on to one's beliefs, decisions, or opinions, especially in the face of opposition or pressure to change. Emily, I know my idea for the project is the right way to go. Some people are trying to convince you otherwise, right? Yeah, but I'm going to stick to my guns and defend my plan. That's the spirit, Mark. If you believe in it, you should stick to your guns. I appreciate your support, Emily. It's important to stay confident. Keep your focus and stick to your guns, Mark. I'm sure it'll work out. Hang in there. Meaning, encouragement to persevere or endure a difficult situation. Hey, Mike, I've been feeling overwhelmed with all this work lately. I understand, Sarah. It can be tough sometimes. Yeah, I'm trying my best to keep up, but it's challenging. Just hang in there, Sarah. You're doing great, and things will get better. Thanks, Mike. I needed that encouragement. I'll keep pushing through. That's the spirit, Sarah. Keep your chin up and hang in there. Keep your cool. Meaning, to stay calm and composed in a stressful situation. Mike, we're running out of time to finish this project. I know, Sarah, but let's keep our cool and stay focused. You're right, getting stressed won't help us. Let's work through it calmly. Exactly, Sarah. When we keep our cool, we can think more clearly and find solutions. Thanks for the reminder, Mike. Let's stay calm and tackle this together. Cut to the chase. Meaning, get to the main point or skip the unnecessary details. Emily, there's something important I need to discuss with you. Sure, Tom, what's on your mind? Well, I'll cut to the chase. I think we should consider hiring a new team member. I appreciate you getting straight to the point, Tom. Let's discuss the details and see if it's necessary. Thanks, Emily. I think it'll benefit the team, and I wanted to address it directly. I'm glad you brought it up, Tom. Let's explore this further. Chill out. Meaning, to relax or calm down. Sarah, you seem really stressed out about the upcoming deadline. Yeah, I am. There's so much to do, and I'm feeling overwhelmed. Take a deep breath and chill out for a moment. We'll figure this out together. You're right, Mike. I need to calm down and approach this more relaxed. That's the spirit, Sarah. When you chill out, you can think more clearly and work more effectively. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate your support. Let's tackle this calmly. Hangry. Meaning, a combination of hungry and angry, used to describe the irritability that can arise when someone is hungry. Emily, I'm getting really hangry. I haven't eaten since breakfast. I know the feeling, Tom. Let's grab a quick snack before we continue working. Good idea, Emily. I can't concentrate when I'm this hangry. Don't worry, Tom. We'll satisfy your hunger, and then we can get back to work. FOMO, fear of missing out. Meaning, the feeling of anxiety or unease that you're missing out on something exciting or interesting. Emily, I noticed you've been going to a lot of social events lately. 
Yeah, Tom, I don't want to miss out on anything fun happening in town. I get it. FOMO can be a powerful motivator to stay active in the community. Exactly, Tom. I want to make the most of my time and not feel like I'm missing out. Well, keep enjoying those events and beating FOMO, Emily. No biggie. Meaning, informal way to say something is not a problem or not a big deal. Mike, I accidentally spilled some coffee on your desk. I'm really sorry. No biggie, Sarah. Accidents happen. Thanks for letting me know. I'll clean it up right away. I appreciate your honesty, Sarah. It's really not a big deal. Freak out. Meaning, to become extremely anxious or upset. Tom, I lost my phone, and I can't find it anywhere. Don't freak out, Emily. Let's retrace your steps and try to locate it. I'm just so worried because it has all my important contacts and photos. I understand, Emily, but freaking out won't help. We'll do our best to find it. You're right, Tom. Let's stay calm and search for it systematically. That's the spirit, Emily. We'll find your phone, just stay focused. Piece of work. Meaning, a term used to describe someone who is difficult or has a challenging personality. Sarah, have you met the new guy in our department? Yeah, I have. He's quite a piece of work, isn't he? Tell me about it. He's always causing drama and making things difficult. I don't know how he manages to be such a piece of work all the time. We just have to stay professional and not let his behavior affect us. Agreed, Mike. We'll focus on our work and not get caught up in his antics. Up the ante. Meaning, to increase the level of something, often in terms of risk or effort. Emily, our competitors are offering a discount on their products. We can't let them get ahead. It's time to up the ante and offer something even better. I was thinking the same thing. Let's increase our value and show our customers why we're the best choice. That's the spirit, Tom. We'll up the ante and stay competitive in the market. Absolutely, Emily. Let's make sure our customers know they're getting the best deal with us. Behind the eight ball. Meaning, in a difficult or challenging situation. Mike, I've been so busy with work lately that I'm really behind on my assignments. I can see that you're behind the eight ball, Sarah. What can I do to help? I appreciate your offer, Mike. Maybe you can assist me with some research for one of the projects? Of course, I'd be happy to help. Let's work together to catch up and get you back on track. Thanks, Mike. Your support means a lot. We'll overcome this together. All ears. Meaning, when someone is eager and ready to listen or hear something. Emily, I have some exciting news to share. I'm all ears, Tom. What's the big news? I just got a promotion at work, and I wanted to tell you first. That's fantastic, Tom. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, Emily. I knew you'd be excited, so I wanted you to be the first to know. Spill the beans. Meaning, to accidentally or intentionally reveal a secret or confidential information. Emily, I heard you have some juicy gossip. What's the scoop? Well, Tom, I promised I wouldn't tell, but I can't resist. I'll spill the beans. Come on, Emily, you can't leave me hanging like this. Okay, fine. But you have to promise not to tell anyone else. I promise, Emily. Now, spill the beans. All right, here it is. Mark is planning to propose to Sarah next week. Wow, that's exciting news. Thanks for spilling the beans, Emily. Keep an eye on. Meaning, to 
to watch or monitor something or someone closely. Mike, I heard there's a storm coming our way tonight. That's concerning. We should keep an eye on the weather forecast. Agreed. It's important to stay informed and take precautions if necessary. Let's make sure we're prepared for any changes in the weather. Definitely, Mike. We'll keep an eye on it and stay safe. Piece of advice. Meaning, a helpful suggestion or recommendation. Emily, I'm thinking of applying for that new job. That's great, Tom. Do you want a piece of advice on how to prepare for the interview? Sure, I'd appreciate any advice you have to offer. First, research the company thoroughly, and then tailor your resume to match the job description. That's solid advice, Emily. What else? During the interview, be confident, but also be yourself. Show them why you're the right fit. Thanks for the piece of advice, Emily. I'll use it to prepare and hopefully land the job. Hit the road. Meaning, to begin a journey or leave a place. Tom, it's time for our road trip. Are you ready to hit the road? Absolutely, Emily. I've been looking forward to this adventure. Great. Let's load up the car and hit the road to our first destination. I can't wait to explore new places and enjoy the journey. It's gonna be an amazing trip, Tom. Let's hit the road and make some memories. Catch some Z's. Meaning, to go to sleep or take a nap. Emily, I'm so tired after our long hike today. Me too, Tom. I can't wait to get back to the cabin and catch some Z's. A good night's sleep sounds amazing right now. Let's make sure we're well rested for tomorrow's adventures. Agreed, Emily. We need to recharge and be ready to explore more. Beat around the bush. Meaning, to avoid directly addressing a topic or question and instead talk vaguely or indirectly. Emily, I need to talk to you about something important. Okay, Tom, what's on your mind? Well, I don't want to beat around the bush, so here it is. I think we should reevaluate our project timeline. I appreciate your directness, Tom. Let's discuss the details and figure out the best way forward. Thanks, Emily. I believe being straightforward is the most effective way to address this issue. I agree, Tom. Let's not waste time and get to the point. Drop the ball. Meaning, to make a mistake or fail to do something correctly, especially when you were responsible for it. Mike, you were in charge of organizing the team meeting today, right? Yes, I was, but I completely forgot about it. I dropped the ball on that one. It happens to the best of us, Mike. Let's reschedule the meeting and make sure it doesn't happen again. I appreciate your understanding, Sarah. I won't drop the ball next time, I promise. No worries, Mike. We all make mistakes. Let's move forward and ensure the meeting happens as planned. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of our new videos and also comment. For more videos like this please check out the playlist on end screen. Thanks for watching.